Greetings and welcome to the Happy O'Clock Radio Show. Our objective is to share testimonies, offer inspiration, and pray for our listeners. We do this with an expectation that you will realize miracles and manifestations from the power of the Holy Spirit. I would like to start out by thanking Kingdom Purpose Radio for allowing us to broadcast Happy O'Clock. Kingdom Purpose TV and Radio is a 24-7 Christian broadcasting network dedicated to providing a platform for kingdom-minded ministries to share the gospel with the world. This is a phenomenal ministry, and we are so proud to be a part of it. I would also like to thank the founders of the Zane K. Keturah International Institute of Pneumatology, Zane Pierre and Keturah Bartholomew. We appreciate your confidence in our Happy O'Clock radio show that was birthed from our training in your institute. And while we are live, we encourage those who are with us on social media to say hello, ask questions, as well as make prayer requests in the comments, and we will respond to you. We are streaming live on Facebook in the Anointed Life Mindset Mentors Group, the Sonship Lifestyle Community Group, and the Inspirational Testimonies, the Real Deal Group. And we are also streaming on YouTube in the ZKI International Institute of Pneumatology YouTube channel. My name is Patty. I'm also known as Happy, and I'm your host tonight. I'm from Valdosta, Georgia, and one of the inspirational master mentors of the Institute of Pneumatology. And co-hosting with me are fellow inspirational master mentors of the Institute, Shelly Ann Pierre and Loretta Finley. How are you tonight? Super awesome, Shelly Ann. Oh, wonderful, Patty. And I'm so happy to be here and um, co hosting with you guys, you beautiful and lovely, blessed ladies. And I'm Shelly Ann Pierre from Trinidad and Tobago, all the way in the Caribbean. Woohoo! And it's so beautiful there. <laughs> I saw a live, um, Zane and Katura did a live in out your way yesterday. Did you see that, Shelly Ann? Yes, yes, yes. They were, uh, I was like, oh, my goodness. Take us there. The sun yep. was starting to set, and you could see the water, and oh, my goodness. I could almost smell it. <laughs> it was divine. I'm looking forward to going there Wonderful. someday. Yep, yeah. and we would love to have you Oh, and also, you did come up in the conversation about when we come there, we must have your cooking. <laughs> <laughs> you are, are known all around the world for your famous cooking. How about that? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you tonight, lovely Loretta Finley? I am doing very well, Patty, and thank you so much, all these sisters, for having me here with you. My name is Loretta Finley, and I'm from Jason, Alabama, and I am blessed to be here sharing with all of you. And we are blessed that both of y'all are here, and, and <laughs> I'm blessed that I'm here. I'm feeling blessed myself. <laughs> How about that? We're well, all blessed. We're gonna, yeah, we are. We'll, we'll start off sharing testimonies. And um, Loretta, would you like to start? Sure. Um, well, we've had some issues with our electricity. Um, last week, about three times, uh, one, two times one day and, and uh, once another day, our half our house of elect half of our house electricity went out and there were no um we live in an older house so we have fuses and no fuses blew uh we have circuit breakers also and there no circuit breakers were um broken so um it went back on fairly quickly 15 20 minutes and then today it happened again and we were expecting it to come on but um our our refrigerator was out our air conditioner um, stove, uh, different things you use. And, um, then it was four hours and I had, I had prayed earlier that it would come back on. And then about, I guess 
3.30, I reinforce that prayer. And then I let you know around, what, 4.15 or something. And yeah. you stood with me. And five minutes later, it came on. So I just... Boom, believe, Yahweh. That was, yes, the power of God. Awesome. Coming out of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the word of Yahweh stands supreme. Yes, even, even in electricity. Half power in the house. <laughs> yeah, well, As, Holy yeah. Spirit is energy, and yeah. electricity is energy, and so yeah, He rules and reigns. So there we yes, go. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. Well, I have a couple of testimonies, and um, I'll try not to make them too long, but it's just so interesting how things happen. And the reason why I want to share these is to show how we have opportunities along the way. When we're on our way to do something, opportunities will arise or things will come up and you'll know it's an opportunity to release the power of the Holy Spirit from you, you know? And um, the first one was on Saturday, I was with some girlfriends and we went to a festival that was out of town and we were driving back toward Valdosta and we we're on the interstate and I was in the back seat and there were two of my friends were in the front seat and I was looking down. I think I was on my phone actually, but um, I heard my friend that was driving say something about somebody on the side of the road. And I wonder if we should stop and see if he needs help. And I, and I looked up, I didn't even look at what it looked like or anything. I said, I didn't see it, but I said, well, yes, you should turn around if you feel like you should, you know, so she, so she went immediately to a um, turnaround and turn around and went back. I said, if nothing else, we can drive, drive by and see, you know, so when she turned around, we went, came back up and there was this man in a tractor trailer um, rig. I don't, I'm not really good with vehicles and things, but it was a big truck with a big bed on the back that had something on it. And, um, and this man was somewhat in the driver's sort of in with the door open with the driver's seat, trying to lift an electric wheelchair into his, to the front of his truck. And, um, and he was by himself. And so, oh uh, yeah. So I, um, so I said, go ahead and pull up, you know, go ahead and pull over and, and um, the front passenger and I got out and I, I, told my friend I said stay in the car now I don't even know why I said that to her but I said stay in the car I guess deep inside I was thinking for safety reasons I don't know what she was supposed to do if anything were to happen but anyway <laughs> so we walked over I know right so I walked over to the to the truck and and this man bless his heart he was he was dripping sweat he was so hot and there was no way he could have done this by himself and we helped him I end up going around on the other side and to the back of the cab of the truck and help pull move stuff around so he could get it back over and my other friend was helping him push it and it was crazy I mean it's like I don't even know how he thought that he was going to be able to do this but anyway so then I came back around to the driver's side and um so he got, he was saying, thank you and all. And so um, his window was rolled down. And so I, I put my left hand up on his arm and I said, do you need prayer for anything? And he said, yes. And I said, what, what do you need prayer for? And he said, for healing. And obviously that wheelchair was his. So um, my friend put her hand on the other, on his other arm. And I prayed for him, for his healing. And, um, and then my friend who was in the driver's seat, the windows were down all day. She prayed in agreement, you know, the three-way cord, here we go. But um, I am convinced that man was healed. That man was healed. And um, it was what I call a divine appointment. I know other people might call it that too. But um, I feel like it was a setup for us to be have an opportunity to speak life and healing over this man who was in need. He was in need physically but also in the moment for help you know so i just wanted to um give god the glory for that because i know that man's healed patty i have a question it was yeah. his wheelchair and he yes. was trying to get it in and he was sick. yes he, Good. His, he wasn't nice. sick he was 
handicap. He couldn't walk. He couldn't but do see, it. What, right. He couldn't do it. And he's, what he said happened was that um, somebody, he had taken the truck somewhere to, and it was loaded for him. And as he was going down the interstate, it felt loose. So he pulled over to, you know, secure the load. And that, so he got out himself in a wheelchair and secured the load and tried to get back in his truck. And that's what, you know, he was having difficulty. Oh, so he was trying to get the wheelchair back in. Right. Okay. That's and it wasn't wild. going very smoothly at all. But anyway, he, he said where he was going that he would have help. So that was good. <laughs> but anyway, so that bless was one thing. Heart. Yeah, bless him. And I just know he's healed. And, and I, I know he's Life shouting glory, you. glory, hallelujah. <laughs> it's like, it so amazing. It's such a great feeling <laughs> to be able to pray for somebody like that. And then um, this thing, I don't know if I should spend this much time on this, but... Um, then another one happened when on my way to the jail to minister in the jail Sunday morning. Um, I I drove as I was driving this beautiful red bird flew not close to where I hit or anything, but flew in front of my vehicle and it and the thought came to my mind about something that happened. I know that the Lord brought this up to my mind. I'm going to tell you why, but um, brought to my mind about when I had been to Pulaski Women's State Prison and ministered years ago several years ago, and I had made the comment when I was um, speaking that the Lord reveals himself in so very many different ways that he can do it in any way that he could even, if you're outside and you're just enjoying the outdoors, he, he could send a bird up to you just to, to show himself to you, you know, to, just to delight, to, you know, to give you something beautiful. And so, um, and then when I got home that night, because I had to drive, is it to, to a good two hour drive where I went? And um, when I got home that night, it was about 11 or 11.30 at night. And I was washing my face and a bird came up to the window and started singing. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, Jesus. I mean, I felt like he gifted me with that. I don't know how cry mm -hmm. about it. It's like he gifted me saying, yes, I do. You know, I do send. Mm -hmm. I can send a bird to you. Oh, well, anyway, so that you know that made me think that. Well, then when I walked into the jail, this is the first time it's ever happened like this. That an inmate walked up to me when I walked into the cell block, you know, to the um, common area. When I walked in, this inmate walked right up to me, right up to my face, and said, "Hi, my name's Raven." Yeah. Yes, she did. I said, oh, "What?" <laughs> She said, I didn't know another bird. And I said, Raven. And so then I put my hand on her shoulder and I said, Raven. I said, I, the Lord wants you to know that he sees you and he has not forgotten you. Mm -hmm. And he will not let one raven fall to the ground without him knowing. You may seem like you're stumbling, but you will not fall. You will not fall to the ground. And it's like the Lord brought all that back around because he Ooh. knew that Raven was going to walk up to me and say, hi, my name's Raven. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I love that. I just love it too. And yeah, I, I just beautiful. wanted to share. I just wanted mm, to share. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Next, we have some prayer requests. And um, Shelly Ann, would you like to share the prayer requests that you have? You're muted. Shelly Ann? There you go. Whoop. <laughs> You're muted. Still muted. <laughs> I'm trying to unmute you. Oh, she keeps there. It's me. Yeah. I'm trying to unmute her. So. Okay. <laughs> you there? Yay. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Didn't you have a prayer concern you wanted us to pray over tonight? Okay. Yes. Because I, I kind of, uh, my internet just dropped there for a moment. So I went in with silence. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. um, I have um, my cousin, he's a pastor, and 
he just found out that he has cancer, um, the progressive type, but it's in its early stage. And um, I want to just to declare that ca every cancer cell has to die and that it would not return and he is healed. Absolutely. We can stand in agreement on that. So be and, it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I speak to the spirit of cancer. And I tell you to leave Shelly Ann's cousin. What's his first name, Shelly Ann? Colin. Is that, is that? Colin. Colin? Yes, Colin. Okay, spirit of cancer, you leave Colin. You must leave his body and not return. Body come fully restored from my spirit, from our spirit, spirit of life. We speak life to Colin. Life flowing through his body. Every cell in his body lined up according to the word of life, the word of truth, according to what Yahweh says. And this demon of cancer, you must go and not return. So Cease and desist. You are Amen. cursed. Amen. 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 And it is done. It is done. Yes. Okay. And if our listeners, if you have any prayer concerns, if you want to put them in the comments, we will be glad to pray for you too. We and have a Facebook user that says, hello, so excited. Uh, we don't know your name. If you can let us know who you are. Thank you. Yeah. Hello and good evening to you too. So tonight our topic is from Zane Pierre's blog on Patreon. His Patreon account is patreon.com forward slash Zane underscore L-E-L underscore Fuego, F-U-E-G-O. And it's titled, Do You Have a Carnal Mind? And to lay the foundation on the significance of this topic, let's look at the encounter between Jesus and the woman at the well in John 4. When she asked him, where are they supposed to worship after determining that Jesus was a prophet? And what's so interesting is that the people have been looking for a prophet for 400 years. It's been silence. No prophet speaking for 400 years. And here was this man. She said, you must be a prophet. Isn't that cool? But 400 mm -hmm. years. Well, anyway, this is what Jesus told her in reference to worshiping in John 4, 23 and 24. It says, a time will come, however... Indeed, it is already here when the true, genuine worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, reality. For the Father is seeking just such people as these as his worshipers. God is spirit, a spiritual being, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, reality. And so must, when I say must in the Bible, <laughs> it sounds like there's no other option. Correct, my holy sisters? Correct. <laughs> must, is, right? must is such a powerful word. And therefore, it's crucial that we understand what it looks like to worship in spirit and in truth. Practically, to make sure we are found by God. Yahweh to be fulfilling this lifestyle and also we have learned in the Institute in spirit and in truth is a couplet joined by the word and so they have parallel meaning and therefore to worship in spirit which is truth mm. spirit is truth pretty cool huh mm -hmm. so and also another verse that just it popped up a little bit later to me was in Romans 8, 14. The Amplified Version states, For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Mm. That's so powerful. Mm. I mean, if we're going to say we're sons of God, we best be led by the Spirit. What? That's where was what that? Romans what? That's Romans 8, 14. And I was reading the Amplified Version. Thank you. 
Yes, ma'am. And knowing what this means and how to live it out is of utmost importance. So let's look at the blog Zane Pierre wrote and published on his Patreon page. <coughs> I shared this in the jail ministering to the inmates yesterday, and we did an activation at the end. And so we can do that tonight, too, all our listeners, whoever wants to. So it's very powerful. So be sure to stay tuned if, if you don't want to miss it. Hmm. So I'm asking my co-host, my precious and lovely Shelly Ann and Loretta to read the blog and they're going to take turns. So um, if I interject here and yonder, which I might not, but if I do, I'm going to go ahead and in advance and ask you to pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't want you to think yeah. I'm rude, but if something you go you know, right I'm ahead. So, because Definitely the thing is, right ahead. When, when I was reading it in the jail, I didn't read very far before I was expounding on it. You know what I'm saying? So I'll try to let you just read it because it makes such good sense in and of itself. But let's see how it goes. Shelly, will you start? Sure. Beware. There is a doctrinal tumbling block going around that teaches that the saints have a carnal mind. This is resulting in many saints living in an internal and never-ending battle with themselves and wanting to bypass their mind. The very thing that God created and said it was good and live from the heart, this is the same as saying that you would like to breed not by use of your lungs, that is designed to provide you with air to breathe but directly from your heart example the organ this is mechanically imposs impossible and any attempt to do so would result in catastrophe the doctrinal stumbling block is usually taken from an uncontextual approach to Paul's letter to the Romans. It reads in Romans 8, 5 and 8, for those who are living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratifies the body. But those who are living according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit, his will and purpose. Now the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace, the spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God both now and forever. This mind, the mind of the flesh, with its sinful pursuits, is actively hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. And those who are in the flesh living a life of that caters to sinful appetites and impulses cannot please God. Isn't that right? Loretta? Thank you, Shelley. Um, many read this excerpt and somehow interpret the use of the word mind to mean some physical construct that must be abandoned or bypassed. Due to that allusion, verse 7 is read in the context that is not intended. It is erroneously interpreted to mean that there is an aspect of this physical mental component that does not please God and cannot submit to God's law. I would like to emphatically state that this is not the context of Paul's letter. The use of the word mind is in this excerpt is not referring to the mind as some physical construct that needs to be bypassed in order to walk in the spirit. The context of the use of the word mind is actually along the lines of the word mindset, 
way, i.e. way of thinking. The foundation of what we refer to as perspective. Definition of mindset, a mental attitude or inclination. That's one. And then a fixed state of mind. Shelly Kemp? Sure. The mind, as all other creations, was created by God. If we take the narrative of Genesis into consideration, we would see that there is nothing that God created that was not affirmed as good. Even the psalmist states plainly that his works are perfect. Therefore, it would be outrageously erroneous to look at the mind in itself as anything evil. How we use God's creation, in this case, the mind, however, is what we, is what would be um, categorized as good or evil, or to be more pertinent to God's perspective in light or in darkness. This is what is known as mindset. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesians says in chapter 4, verse 23, be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind. What this spirit of the mind does, the mind have a spirit. The word spirit is, as is known to the popular church doctrines, represents some ethical entity that walks around and or travels from one place to another, entering other entities. Do you know that this understanding is not it? the scriptural context? Definition of spirit. Phenomena, phono, pho, pho, pineoma, I hope I said that correctly. A current, a current of air, example, breathe, breath, blast or breathe by analogy or figuratively a spirit, example, human. The rational, the rational soul, by implication, vital principle, mental disposition. Let me read that again. Pneuma. Definition. Pardon me. I think that the it's pronounced pneuma, like pneumatology. Pneuma. Pneuma. Right. Def yeah. So let me go over that again. Definition of spirit. Phenom. Um. Phenomena, pneuma, a current or air, example, breath, blast, or breeze, by analogy, or figuratively, a spirit, human, the rational, the rational soul, by implication, vital principle, mental disposition, mental disposition. In other words, what the Apostle Paul was saying in our modern day English is change your mental disposition, renew it. Loretta? That was a boom statement, wasn't it? <laughs> Definitely. Yes, change it. Go ahead, Loretta. Definitely, we need to Definitely um, change our mental disposition and renew our minds daily. Amen. Do you know that this is what the two trees that existed in the very center of the Garden of Eden are referring to? Yes, that's right. Mental disposition. Definition of disposition. One, prevailing tendency, mood, or inclination. Two, temperamental makeup. Three, the tendency of something to act in a certain manner under given circumstances. 
The tree of life represents the mental inclination or tendency to use life, God, as the paradynamic reference point for living. Ooh, I think I just lost my place. Wait a minute. Yeah, here we go. Um, yeah. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil represents the mental inclination or tendency to use anything but God as the paradigmatic reference point for living. Hence, the metaphoric title, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, could also be called the tree of one's subjective model of what is good and evil. That is, mindset. Therefore, the mind that you possess is not evil. As a matter of fact, in his letter to the Corinthians, Paul also said that we are we have the mind of Christ. You do not have a carnal mind. However, what you are very capable of having is a carnal mindset. In light of this clarity, the same excerpt of Romans should read, for those who are living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratify the body. But those who are living according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit, his Yahweh will and purpose. Now the mindset of the flesh is death both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. The spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God, both now and forever. The mindset of the flesh, which is with its sinful pursuits, is actively hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law, since it cannot. And those who are in the flesh, living a life that caters to sinful appetites and impulses, cannot please God. Today, we encourage you to change your mental disposition. You have the mind of Christ because you have the spirit of Christ. Your mind is holy. Live in the acknowledgement of this and experience the difference. End of blog. Patty? All righty. Thank you so much. appreciate y'all reading that. You're welcome. Yeah. And you know, um, it's a, a freedom of choice. And this is one thing I was explaining to the inmates. It's like, even though you've been given the spirit of Yahweh, you've been given the spirit of God, you can choose to stay in the old mindset which is not really a good idea <laughs> and it leads to destruction but um just like the lord doesn't force us to accept him as lord he doesn't force us to take on his mindset it's a choice we must decide we make the decision and one thing i explained to them was that there was a time when I was struggling so deeply within myself that um, I came to a point where I had to make, it was like the crossroads, where I had to make the decision to either continue in self-destruction or to end it and say no more. And turn to my savior and let him lead my life let me live through him and um or let him live through me and um it was it was like i just couldn't stand myself anymore i mean i was just to that point and um i remember i literally said no sternly 
and affirmatively and decidedly, meaning I was done. I was so done. And um, so what I did was I shared that with them. And that's um, what we ended up doing as an activation at the end that um, we all, I told them if they wanted to say they are done with living from the old mindset that is not theirs they to lay that down and turn away from it and pick up the spirit of christ that is within them and live from that mindset and we did that at the end and we're going to do that at the end tonight too so it um, be prepared if anybody is at that point if you're hearing this and you're at the point it's like i'm tired of this inner struggle. I'm tired of, I mean, I know Jesus is Lord. I know he is the one who, who is the son of the living God, who, who died and rose again and is seated right now at the right hand of God, the father. I mean, I believe all this. Now I'm ready to live my life. Like I believe this to, um, stop living from my desires and my flesh and my senses and start living from a mindset of Christ that was rightfully given to me as a child, as a, a, a son, as far as rights, you know, the standing um, in the kingdom realm, what this, what it means to be a son of the king, that standing that we can make the decision to turn and live from that perspective. So I, I would like to say this, that to be carnally minded will always be guided by the senses and and external factors above what is actually believed and to be spiritually minded is to live from the breath of Yahweh that was breathed into us into us excuse me with his nature his character his title his essence his species his logic his mindset as our priority and no other option on the table it does not matter how we feel at the time or anyone's opinion so that is how you determine if you're living from the flesh or living from the spirit from the carnal mind or from the spirit mindset and what the reason why I was think of this activation is because I this all came up to me while I was there I know it was of the spirit but you know in Romans 10 9 and 10 it states if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so using that as a template for this mindset we can believe in our heart that his mind is in us and we confess with our mouth no more of the old i am living from here on out from this day forward with the mindset of yahweh so if you desire to stop living from the mindset of the flesh and decide from this moment you will intentionally live from, from your spirit. Do this. Stand up and repeat after me. It's an activation. And it's so powerful. Because when you move, when you know, faith moves. Faith isn't isn't just hearing. When you when you um, faith comes by hearing, but once you hear, you take action on it. So let's take an action. So if you'll stand up and repeat after me. And say it, meaning it, like no, as in no more. You ready? Let's do it. No more. I am no longer a slave to a mindset of the flesh. I am a rightful child of Yahweh. And from this moment on, I intentionally live from His Spirit the spirit of life. Amen. So be it.
So be it. That, yeah, if you took that action, your so life will never be the same. Now it's a matter mm. of renewing your mind daily because it's just like planting a seed. You know, when you plant a seed, it, it's got to grow. You know, you got to take care of it. And you, you, we need to get in the word and learn what, you know, dig in. And um, you can join any of our, our Facebook groups or you can, um, I would suggest you go to um, International Institute of Pneumatology.com and check that out. And you can find the teachings and um, the tools that you need that will help you. So that's what my recommendation is. Patty? Yes, ma'am. You know, I, I, I so love the definition of spirit, the pneuma, yeah. a current of air. And that's how easy it is. The very air that you breathe is spirit of Yahweh Elohim. And that's how easy it is. You know, by making that affirmation that you gave them and they just breathe in Holy Spirit, they just breathe in the breath of Yahweh Elohim that gives them life. You know, some people think that you have to work for it and you have to do works and, and so on. The very, the very Your very existence, because it's His breath in your body. You are one with Yahweh Elohim. He gives you life. The very air, the very breath, as a, bla as a breeze, as a blast, as the definition says. Yeah, it's so it beautiful. That mm, yes. yes. Another thing that, that I share with them that, I was, that we learned in the Institute was what it means to, to walk with the Lord and the example we were given with the ox, with the mature ox is um, bound with a, a baby or a young calf ox, oxen. I guess, I don't know if I'm using the right um, labels, but the one that's just learning is with the mat, the one that's mastered the work and united together. And when the, the mature oxen is leading the, the younger one to show them the way to go. And it's, that's how we are yoked with the spirit is that we allow him to lead us in the way we should go and not fight against him. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was yeah pretty awesome thing. That's, a, that's the yoke. That was talking yeah. about Matthew. Yeah. yeah. When we're yoked with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the same as walking with him. Yeah. Well, um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you some one other thing that happened while we were while I, I say we while I was in the jail with the inmates, that um when I was teaching this and going over everything, um the ladies were sitting at the tables out in the common area and they were looking at me. I was at one side of the room and I was faith I was facing the um, interior cells. I mean, I could see them. And there was a lady who came out and stood out and she had something wrapped ar around her head and she had it sort of hooded looking. So like you could barely see her face. It was quite creepy actually, <laughs> but she, um, she really seemed to be demonically oppressed and she um, kept trying to interrupt and she Asked, she said, have you ever seen Jesus or something? I said, yes. <laughs> she, she said, I'm Jesus. And, and um, oh but she definitely was not. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I was, you know, I explained to the other ladies there that I see Jesus in them, you know, but um, I wasn't knocking that lady. She didn't hear me. But um, when I, what happened and the reason why I'm sharing this is because um, she really tried to derail the teaching she tried to derail the whole um time period in the spirit and and i just kept i mean it didn't bother me i just kept going and um and then all of a sudden she came up behind me and sat at it where no one else was and sat at a table behind me and opened some book and i turned and looked and it had some some man's face i don't know what book she had 
but she was sitting there holding it open. And um, I looked, then I looked back around and another inmate came and kind of sat in between. She sat to where she was blocking that, the one that was having mm. a problem. And, um, and so I decided I'd walk to the other side. I'd walk through. I said, I guess we need to turn around. So I walked over and said they all had to turn so that this woman was now in the back of the room instead of right behind me. <laughs> so, so, I, so, I, so I proceeded to go ahead and then um and then a couple of the inmates ran over to the window and was flagging down the guards and telling them that that she was trying to disrupt they wanted her locked down they wanted her put in lockdown and so the guard came and um put her in her her cell and locked the door and I you know kept going then I walked back to the other side so that they wouldn't be facing her room <laughs> so I walked back and I said I, I guess it's time to turn around again so I walked back to the other side and then um all of a sudden I didn't know there was another lady in the cell block with her but I heard her I heard her say yell out you don't treat her that was disrespectful and you don't talk to a woman of god like that and she was just like fussing at her and that woman slapped her and she hit they started fighting mm-hmm. so then, wow. so, right so then the inmates ran over to the window again it was waving down the guard and the, the guard came in and um let the woman out that was um that was in there sticking up for god you know and mm-hmm. locked in kept the one that was the troublemaker kept her locked in there and um luckily she kept quiet after that but the other lady was pretty well distraught but I went and I prayed over her but then I this is the whole reason why I'm telling y'all this is I didn't let it bother me I mean I didn't like it I prefer it not happen but then I took it as a teaching opportunity I said you know mm-hmm. look when something happens that tries to take your focus away from the spirit sometimes you have Mm -hmm. to turn around so you so it's not in your face you need to turn Mm -hmm. away from it and use this for an opportunity to exercise what what i'm showing you here and also i taught them that we treat that we realize it's not everyone knows the truth they're in darkness. And so we can consider that maybe this woman is in darkness and she just doesn't know. So we don't treat people with contempt because they don't know. But you don't want to subject yourself to be in, in, in harm's way. But in the same regard, we don't retaliate. So it was a learning opportunity. I mean, you know, everything that happens to us is an opportunity to express who we are in Christ with our authority and power to overcome the situation. And so I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to show them that. And I'm thankful that it didn't, you know, sidetrack me to where I couldn't go on. You know what I'm saying? I think that was great, Patty. Yeah. um, Yeah. I thank the Lord. I mean, it was all, when I go in there, the spirit is, um, he just really takes over and he's so powerful and some of the things I say I don't even know where, where they I came from with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like wow that was good that wasn't me no. <laughs> I love it I know I'm so thankful well it's getting close to our time to end so I want to make sure we have an opportunity to pray for our listeners so um, I think that it'd be good for us to pray, of course, whatever's on y- your hearts, um, Shelly and Loretta, and um, also that this teaching liberates our, our listeners to understand that they have the mind of Christ and how to practically live from that position. We could pray that. So, Loretta, would you like to start? Sure. Okay, Thank you, Lord, for tonight. And we just are grateful and thankful for this time together and for those who are listening and will be listening we declare that this teaching will be an arrow into their hearts and minds to liberate them 
to understand that they have the mind of Christ and how to practically live from that position. We have a choice. We have the mind of Christ. And the we can choose that mindset by living in that we have old habits but we can turn through the power and the strength of holy spirit that's in us to renew our minds and live by the mind of Christ So I thank you Lord that right now as we spoke and will continue to speak this truth that it will liberate those out there who have had carnal mindsets and they will choose to live by the mindset of Christ the mind of Christ to learn the promises and all that you have for them in the word of god and the holy spirit will speak to them and they will be guided and directed we thank you lord for that in your precious holy name the name of yahweh and yahweh elohim yahshua amen Amen. Shelly Ann, would you like to pray? You're muted. Hmm. Shelly Ann, would you like to pray? Sure, I just um, cut out there for a moment. Okay, we're glad you're back. For I declare even now that those by the sound of our voices, that their mind will be renewed in the, in the promises of God and in all that he has done and establish them in daily, that they will be renewed, that their hearts will be renewed, their mind will be renewed, and they will be truly be transformed by the renewing of their mind. I declare even now, everything that is contrary and that is not of the will of God be removed every double-mindedness be removed, every unstable mind stabilize, every mind of confusion be at peace. I declare even now that your life will never be the same. I declare that you will have a sound mind and a sound heart. In the name of Yahweh Elohim, let the breath of life breathe into you and upon you and fill you. So be it. So be it. So be it. Thank you, my precious holy sisters. Y'all are both so awesome. I love you so much, and I'm thankful that you are here. We love you, too, and I love Shelly Ann, too. Yeah, (laughs) we have such a great time together. Monday nights are the best. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I would like to thank Kingdom Purpose Radio for the privilege of being on this awe-inspiring platform. And to all our listeners, we thank you. You are formally invited to subscribe to our website, which is International Institute of Pneumatology, 
facebook.com forward slash happy o'clock and join our Facebook groups to include Anointed Life Mindset Mentors Group, Sonship Lifestyle Community Group, Inspirational Testimonies, The Real Deal Group. And in this last one, we invite you to share your testimonies. We just might ask you to be our special guest on the upcoming Happy O'Clock Radio Show. And we sh- um, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, ZKI International Institute of Pneumatology. And all our precious listeners, we will see you all right here next Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Blessings and much love to you all. And good night and shalom fill your household. Amen. Blessings good night. And much love. Good night. Blessings and love. Yeah.